You're listening to the gag on this podcast. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I just is. left after that. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck this. Wouldn't be the weirdest exit we've had on this show. That's for sure. Oh, really? Yeah. Yes, it would be. No, Danny D will just randomly leave. <laughs> like we'll be chatting and then all of a sudden she's fucking gone. And we're like, oh, all right. We were having a conversation. <laughs> yeah. She's better at the Irish goodbye than I am. <laughs> mm, fair it enough. Is, it is St. Patty's Day. Yes, it is. And this is the gag on this podcast (laughs) episode description we'll have a show and guest social media like and follow us on all social media uh subscribe to our youtube page hear the episode two days before it's released on podcast platforms like what you hear leave a review hate what you hear russia needs protesters (laughs) head over there (laughs) um i am your host big nick joined by nationally traveling comedian the italian stallion danny t what what Co-host of the Stand Up Dads podcast, my Portuguese lover, disc golf aficionado, Rob. Hello. Uh, Sharon will be here. Maybe? <laughs> he doesn't um, get an intro when he comes in. He's late. All right. Sharon's wow. a goober. Um, but that doesn't matter because we are joined by the hilarious goddamn Kevin Dombrowski. Woo-hoo. Hi, everybody. Hi. <laughs> um, I I have to ask, are you the same Dombrowski that uh, was in the Buglins? Oh, my God. Yes. <laughs> oh, my God. Why do you know that? <laughs> Nick's is a stalker. That, is it that bad? <laughs> it is. When you first start stand up, you do anything thinking like, oh, man, this could uh, give me a break. This could, uh, you know, lead to something else. And it's like you're just trying to throw as much shit against the wall as possible to see what sticks. And then, uh, and then you have to smell all the shit that you just threw against the wall. <laughs> and, uh, that was like, um, that was basically, uh, <laughs> it was like a student film sketch thing. I don't even, I honestly, dude, I don't even know how I met those guys. I have <laughs> no idea how I met them. Most of them work in, uh, I think, God, there's one dude that I still know from there that works in a restaurant, but it was like supposed to be, it was supposed to be like an office sort of rock band, like mockumentary type thing. As far as I can remember, this is years ago. And uh, and it didn't turn out like that. And we only just stole jokes from movies that we liked without realizing. <laughs> you know what I mean? I like I, I was like, oh, we should do this one thing. But it was like directly aligned from like hot tub time machine. Yes. And then you don't even realize you're like, oh, that would be funny to recreate this moment. But then, like, you know, years later, you're like, oh, so just steal all of their material. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and I don't remember. I don't remember what happened to it. I know we filmed. And then I do know, <laughs> like, one of the dudes, uh, he's a good dude. I think he's like I said, I think he works in uh, he like manages a restaurant now, which is not a slight. I'm just saying he like totally went a different way. But I remember <laughs> we wrapped filming. If I could say that we wrapped filming. And he went, uh, are we famous yet? And I went, oh, no. <laughs> I went, oh, no. I don't know what I'm doing here. And then, uh, you know, all these years later, uh, no one has ever brought that up. Ah, <laughs> uh, And now you're here. Yeah, that's what we do here. Hi, Sharon. Hi. Sorry. I was, I'm not going to, I'm not going to say where I was at. I'm just going to leave that one alone. We, um, <laughs> we had a, a, a special viewing of the Buglins without you. And yeah. I got to tell you, it was missing review. No, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> so would riveting. you recommend it if you could find it? I don't even know if it's, if it's up or what it is. I would love to watch it now. Actually, I would love, I would love. How to long ago it. was this? Oh my God. This has got to be 12 years ago. Oh, wow. Okay. Every well, bit. I had hair. <laughs> I, I had I had no bags under my eyes. I had no responsibility, and I might have had chlamydia. Damn, sweet. Well, then, yeah. good times. <laughs> so you're you're embarrassed by the buglins, um, right? Oh, what about this? So, all right. So, just so you know, 
I don't know why I looked up my I like I looked something I needed something from myself and I didn't have it saved. So I like Googled to see if it would pop up. And I saw that I had an IMDb. Oh, you know what it was? It was like for like uh, possible Twitter verification. I Googled to see if there was like um, like articles or like interviews that I, I had that I could submit for it or, or whatever it was. And I saw my I was like, let me check this stupid IMDb page because I've, I've never updated it. And uh, and uh, <laughs> Danny, are you smoking a crack pipe? What is that? I've never seen anyone burn a bulb at the end of a joint. Uh, no, I did. not I just saw that. There's hella wax the on it. <laughs> <laughs> so I oh, God, you got to be from California with that hella shit. Uh, <laughs> so I, I looked up my IMDb and I saw the bug ones and I went, oh, man, I hope no one ever looks at this. And then I went. Was I in was I in this? <laughs> and I, it's a surge of power, revenge of the sequel. And I tried to look at what my name was in reference to because I never did this. So someone either someone thinks I look like this bald guy right here <laughs> and put my name or someone took an image. Is that Eric Roberts, though? Yes, Eric Roberts. <laughs> yeah. All right. So oh for God. the audio listeners, surge of power, revenge of the sequel has <laughs> Eric Roberts in it. But on top of that, Michelle Nichols, Robert <laughs> Picardo, Linda Blair, Shannon Farnan. I don't know who that is. Bruce Valanche and Lou Ferrigna. Yeah. Oh, I know him. <laughs> I yeah, you know. Everyone knows him. <laughs> <laughs> I know the other guy, too, the Bruce guy. But that's Wait a minute. It, it won winner of best special effects and best villain. Well, wow. it sounds so like they're funny. lying if he wasn't even in it. <laughs> I have no idea what this is. I've never seen this until about a week ago. And uh, and I didn't see everyone else that was in. I, I tried to look at what my name was associated with. Uh, but funny story, when I was a waiter, I waited on Lou Ferrigno. Nice. And this guy was such a fucking asshole. <laughs> I bet. He, it was one of those like... Um, one of those like chiller theater things where it's like, you know, uh, all these old actors and comics and comic book people all get together in a room and then they charge you for fucking autographs to pay their rent. It's yeah. like uh, it's like the old person only fans uh, doing a chiller theater. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Lou Ferrigno came in and I was working at a Roots Chris right next to a Hilton restaurant. And he went um, and I'm not making fun of deaf people. This is what he sounds like. He went, uh, I want your wine from last night. And I went, I wasn't here. I wasn't here last night. And he goes, well, I want your wine. And I was like, do you, do you know what it was? And he goes, I want your wine from that. And he starts wow. yelling at me. And I was like, buddy, I can try to figure it out, but I wasn't here. And no one from last night is here now, but I'll, I'll try to figure it out. So I was like, you know, this is what it says in the computer. And he was like, I'll have a comp challenge with that. And he starts like making his own menu items <laughs> and people are just trying to sit down and eat with him. But he's like ordering ahead of everything. <clears throat> and I had heard that he threw such a fit at one point that the GM of the restaurant had to escort him out and he got banned. Wow. From the roots, Chris. So when he started to like Hulk up and lose his temper a little bit, uh, it was like someone had to like remind him that he had been banned at one point. It's something like that had happened where like he started to like turn big and green, and someone's like, "Do you don't wanna? <laughs> don't wanna do that? <laughs> you wouldn't like you when you're angry." <laughs> so he got, uh, so he kind of calmed down, but he was such a dick. And then I got, I'm so pissed it didn't happen. The Friars Club asked me to roast him, Ooh. and, uh. I so badly wanted to call him the incredible sulk for <laughs> how he acted. And I wanted to be like, you know, I met him before and it was uh, a moment of my life. And I'll never forget what he said is, um, I'll have you come Kelly, with the flaming gun. <laughs> and he fucking dropped out of the roast and we never got to do it. And I was so, oh. all I wanted to do was just shit oh, on him. For that boo, Lou Ferrigno, boo. <laughs> totally. So I'm guessing not a good tip. <laughs> no, no, no. I don't even think he saw the bill. I think one of his handlers paid it and then oh. uh, and then escorted him over to where he can put on his ripped jeans and no shirt and sign autographs <laughs> for, you know, twenty thousand dollars a pop or whatever he's charging. Damn. Good work if you can do it. No shit. Fucking. Yeah. OK, I'm sorry. Yeah. Elephant in the room. Sharon, did you break your fucking nose? Uh, I got a I had a zit on it, so. 
It's easy. Were, is that what you were doing? Were you popping it? Is that what you were you popping your zip? <laughs> no, I have I have a I have a CPAP and it made and it actually made a scar on my face on my top of my nose. Oh, your beautiful little nose. And what it feels you? like we're having conflicting stories. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was a well the zit basically a uh, lot of dirt buildup made a zit and then the CPAP just busted it open. So oh. who are you who are you rooting for in this war? Russia or Ukraine? Let's get to the <laughs> hard hitting question. Well, you, you know what? Well, Russia has good potential, but I mean Ukraine is just like the underdog and the, they're like the Rudy. You know, they're the Rudy in this football they're game. They're the Rudy of uh War crime. <laughs> Just set up brackets. <laughs> March you know they are. I got Zelensky's uh, the number two seat. I think he's going to overtake the number one seat. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think Same. so too. Hey, be quiet, guys. We have a download in Ukraine every week for some fucking random. Oh, reason. do you? We really? had two though, and now we have one. Did they? Perish? Uh, they probably listened and were like, "This is garbage." They <laughs> haven't had power for a while. It's probably <laughs> a, a nurse at a children's hospital that Putin just pumped. Jesus. <laughs> I guarantee trying, it. Trying to get through the night, and uh, you know, uh, and then Sharon broke his nose, and she died. <laughs> could you? Could you imagine if, like, somebody was listening? To our podcast that was the last thing they heard before that theater got blown up was just us talking about which disney princess we'd bang uh I we gotta, all, yeah i gotta be honest i i do think that my podcast is the last thing that anyone hears before a gunshot goes off <laughs> <laughs> so, i could imagine that happen <laughs> It pops up on the stars of the sequel. Like, what? <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. All you hear is welcome, ladies and gentlemen, and then a gunshot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a way to go out. <laughs> speaking, right. of your, speaking of your podcast, you got a first of all, your podcast is uh, just joking. And yes. you have a hot sauce I named do. after your podcast. I do. It's um, it's right there in the back. If you can see all these bottles. Yes. Uh, and then that's the artwork. I'm trying to do this so it makes sense in the camera. Um, so it's Silk City hot sauce. Uh, they're made in Vermont. They're named Silk City after Patterson, New Jersey. That's where uh, the owner, Jeff. Uh, oh, look at that. Yeah, that's nice. Uh, the owner, Jeff, his parents are from Patterson. And I grew up in the town next to Patterson. And uh, he spon- they sponsor a lot of comedy podcasts. And um, when I was just getting up and running, I saw that. So I contacted him and I was like, hey, I have a guest list of all of these comics that you already are involved with, with all these other podcasts. And uh, and he looked at it and he was like, dude, it's done. Let's just do this. So he sponsored the show for a while um, and it was really fun. And then him and I, we just like bust balls and we have very similar lives. He's got, you know, he's a dad. He's up in Vermont. Uh, he's a stay at home and he's like involved with entertainment at night through his hot sauce and all this stuff. Uh, so we relate really well to each other. And he was always like, Hey, let me know if you have an idea for a new sauce and I'll put you on a bottle, which I've always been like, uh, I don't know. I'm, I, for a stand up comic, I really don't like attention. I like doing stand up. I like entertaining people. I don't like, the like the spotlight part of it. So it was always like, I don't want to put my fucking face on a bottle. I think that's stupid. You don't want to take uh, your shirt off and sign autographs for 20 grand. <laughs> yeah, And then wear a, uh, a hat that makes me look like Smokey the bear. No, I don't want to do that. <laughs> no? um, Damn it. I was going to come out and yeah. get one. <laughs> I thought that was a Burt Kreischer joke, to be honest. Uh, <laughs> so I um I was starting to think uh, of uh, of what a good sauce would be. It was during the, the very beginning of the pandemic pandemic and um i'm a big fan of cholula hot sauce and i was like oh so something like that would be good he you know he's got different like varieties and then um when i was ordering pizza uh i domino's forgot their buffalo sauce and domino's buffalo sauce is so fucking good for some reason it's you know it's uh it's like frank's red hot there's domino's and all this and they forgot it and i was like god damn i wish i had buffalo sauce and i went oh my god what about buffalo sauce so i hit up jeff and I was like, hey, uh, you don't have a buffalo sauce. You've got a bunch of different sauces that kind of play off of each other, but nothing like a buffalo sauce. And he was like, oh, my God, that's perfect. So we turned it into he let me name it. He, I wrote the description and then him and I designed the bottle together with a, a, a graphic uh, like comic book novelist. 
And uh, so it's called Just Joking, Very Serious Buffalo Sauce because that's the description as you taste it. And you go, oh, I think I'm good here. And then you go, ah, just joking. This is very serious. Uh, so it's named after the podcast. The cover art is me making food for my daughter, who's the baby buffalo in the background. Um, it's It quotes my album uh, on High on Molly. When, when I was in Wyoming, um, I saw buffalo running on the mountains. And my wife is – so my wife's from Sacramento but grew up a lot in Wyoming with her grandfather. And I legitimately – I'm not bullshitting you guys. I thought buffalo were extinct. I didn't know that they were fucking real. That's how New York I am. Yes. <laughs> we're driving, and I went, what the fuck is that? I just see these this line of things. And she goes, that's a buffalo. And I go, I thought buffalo were fucking extinct. Yeah. And she was like uh, – she goes, what's wrong with you? And I, <laughs> uh, she goes, haven't you heard of bison burgers? I was like, haven't you heard of buffalo wings? I thought it was <laughs> like a chicken sandwich. I didn't, I didn't know it was actual bison meat. I thought they died with the fucking dinosaurs or the Native <laughs> Americans. I have no timeline at all. Doesn't and, feel uh, like a trying. It, it really, that's true. <laughs> and uh, and you know, it just happened the whole week. Like I saw, uh, like moose are like twelve feet fucking tall. Yeah, yes. my dad hit one once on his driving. It, it doesn't make you. it. Was he driving a Hummer? Because that's the only way he no, survived. It, it <laughs> fucked up his car. He was in the hospital for a while. Yeah, <laughs> dude. Yeah. dude, it's like a J.J. Abrams movie. It, it's like moose are fucking ridiculous. Yeah. Elk, elk are like deer on steroids. It's, we have know, elk just, here. Where, where are you right now? Sacramento. Ooh. Oh, we have elk? I fucking knew it with the hella. I we knew that you were from Sacramento. <laughs> so my wife is from uh, Woodland. That's oh, okay. uh, yeah. that's her hometown. <laughs> and uh, I go there. I, I go there. My father-in-law busts my balls. He's like, uh, I'm like, is this a street you turn down? Is this a street you turn? Down? And he's like, you drive in New York. You can't tell where you are. I go, dude, everything is fucking dirt out here. Yeah. You tell me to make a right at the fig tree. Do I look like I've ever seen a fucking fig? <laughs> a new one? What, what the fuck is wrong with you guys? Like, it, it's all. And by the way, when I go out there and we call an Uber, I with my accent, I sound like I buried a fucking body in the farmland. <laughs> <laughs> it's terrifying for me to go out there. So, I love it. So we uh, it, we went out to Wyoming and we saw all this shit. So it quotes. It says, uh, I thought Buffalo were extinct because the, the baby Buffalo is rushing me. And then uh, I don't know if you guys are familiar with uh, Gino Bisconti, who's like uh, he's like my best friend uh, in comedy, but I live to shit on him. Uh, <laughs> uh, he's like Bob, the Reverend Bob Levy uh, took Gino Bisconti on the road and started him out. Gino took me on the road. So we have like three nice. generations of like uh, comedy fuck ups. Um, but every I mean, uh, Nick, I know you've seen it. I live to shit on Gino. I'll, I'll tweet some horrific video and I'll I'll tie it back to Gino Bisconti's act somehow. <laughs> uh, and people just like tag me in these videos, just like horrible. There's there's some where it's like, oh, that guy died. I'm not I can't repost that. <laughs> <laughs> and so and so the the baby buffalo is holding a Gino Bisconti doll with the pull string in the back and his uh, he always says this guy gets it when he's on stage, if he's bombing and someone laughs at a joke, he goes, this guy gets it. <laughs> so it's got Gino with a bottle of whiskey and just dark circles in his eyes. Uh, and the baby uh, pulls a string and it says, this guy gets it. Oh, so it's cool. basically, it's my podcast. It's my life and, uh, and my stand up all in one on the bottle. So it was a really cool, it was actually a really cool project to work on. What's so, up? Nice. Okay. Hi, Owen. <laughs> There's a kid in the bathroom with you. <laughs> that happens all the time. <laughs> Here and in the bathroom. Yeah, I didn't know you were broadcasting from Epstein Island. This. <laughs> oh, I wish. So, so, what the fuck? <laughs> so did you get out and check out the Buffalo or just sit on driving by? And just like, okay, oh, no, I, dude, I don't fuck with that. I, <laughs> there's got to be a, there's got to be a fence or a mountain range between me and something that big. I don't fuck around like that. <laughs> That's I, smart. We did see we stopped at a red light and we, we looked right and there was an elk. And I just went, I went, what the fuck? What is that? And my wife was like, it's an elk. She goes, what's wrong with you two? Because <laughs> Gino was actually was with us. It was my it was my wife's 30th. That's where I proposed. Uh, her yes. best friend and her family was there. Gino was there. Uh, so it was just it's like it constantly when I go out with her family, it's like my cousin Vinny. Mm. Uh, I'm always like, what the fuck is that? And it's like something in the background. <laughs> just got a shotgun that I'm just trying to shoot whatever the fuck is going on. <laughs> <happen. laughs> My uh, my in-laws live on like um, 25 acres of farmland Damn. that someone else. 
yeah, that someone else uh-huh. farms. So they just own the property and yeah. they get a, it's so it's like an income producing property for them. That's dope. And when I first went out there, it was like a wheat farm. And I thought that that was scary until the second time I went out there, it was an almond orchard and I could, <laughs> I could only see the bottom of people. Yep. So, and, and like my, my father-in-law is an architect and uh, he, he built this award-winning house, but half of it's all glass. So you just see fucking legs running through the trees. And I'm like, I am to New York for this shit. <laughs> it is terrifying to be out there for me. There, I hear coyotes and I oh, yes. lock the door and my wife went, what do you think is going to happen? I go, I don't give a fuck. I hear that sound. I'm locking the door. It sounds like someone's getting fucking murdered in the trees. Do you want that to come into the house? I don't think so. You saw the road runner. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah. Oh, you think I want an so anvil city. to fall on me? Yeah. <laughs> you're so city. I am very city. Although you can like so name like taxi companies by sight just based on oh the for job, sure right? yeah I can I can tell you a cop just by the headlights of a car no oh, that's how you, fucking city I am are you nice. from New Jersey because you don't really sound like you're from New Jersey you sound like you're from like Philly kind of interesting I should I should spit in your face for that <laughs> <laughs> I am I'm from Northern Jersey. Okay. Uh, Philly. Okay. No, Philly is a, the grossest accent. Philly, the Philly accent actually makes me gag when I hear it. Yeah. It's uh, people go home and smoke and, uh, <laughs> and shit like that. Oh, I'm going to go home on the grass and smoke. Uh, that no, doesn't I, sound like Philly to me, but okay. I promise you, look up Philly. Honestly, it's right. just fucking cats fighting in an alley. Uh, <laughs> I'm I'm North Jersey okay. slash New York. I've got I lean more towards. Uh, New Jersey's like um, I got to walk the dog and drink a coffee. That's oh. like New Jersey. I'm more in New York where I just don't finish the ends of my words. So I'll say uh, I'll say like I got to go to Long Island and there's no D's or <laughs> <laughs> there's nothing. It's okay. just I cut okay. off the end of every word. That's just okay. how I naturally talk. OK. Hmm. All right. So being from that, you're from you're from Patterson. I'm from Lincoln Park. Oh, okay. don't Lincoln fucking, Park. Yeah. Bleep that out because I don't <laughs> I'm not even afraid that people are going to find that out. I'm just not uh, proud of it. <laughs> wow. I'm from Lincoln Park. I'm from right next to Patterson. Is so that where went, Lincoln Park is from? No, 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 no. But that's okay. a very original question. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, actually, they're from fucking California where you um, uh, you potheads all live. Uh, born and raised. <laughs> So you were born in Fair Oaks. Yeah, Sacramento. Gotcha. OK, so I know like I know like Fairfield, Vagaville, mm-hmm. Woodland. <laughs> yeah. Did I say that right? No, it's a Woodlands. It's a Vacaville. Vacaville. It's, it's I say it like it's a like it's a burlesque show. <laughs> Vagaville over here. <laughs> Uh, coming out with the headache over here. Yeah. <laughs> Word from Vagaville comes the first man of the army is uh... coming out of Walla Walla Washington. <laughs> Pulling Albert troops Kirby. are invading Vagaville. <laughs> SOS back home. Uh, yeah, no, and, no. I, uh, and Davis. I know Davis. Yeah, okay. Davis is. Well, you all know all the yellow areas then. Yellow County. <laughs> No, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that's uh that's so funny. The yellow county <laughs> shit. I was about to say you you named like all of the farm type cities. Like oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's Did all you hear him? His in-laws, all he knows is a 25 acre house made of glass <laughs> in yeah. Woodland. That's true. No, I know that, but I'm just saying, like you didn't say Sacramento. You didn't say Sacramento, you didn't Rancho, say San Cordova. Jose. You just say no one up, says like, San Jose. I Who said what the people don't say? You're not I've from never, the Bay, that's why. I've, yeah, I've, I've never been to San Jose, but I did. I was in um uh no, was I? Is that the only San out there? What's There's the San, San in the Francisco, Bay? Francisco, San no. Leandro, the San Francisco, uh, San Lucas, San Leandro. No, so I, okay, Santa so Anna. Was it the San Jose <laughs> Improv? All that down I, lower, yeah. I think yeah, San Jose Improv. Yeah, yeah. So I I did that with uh with Mencia, and I called him San Antonio at the end of my set. Oops. <laughs> I go I go. What do you think, San Antonio? You ready for a good show? And I got booed off stage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we don't like Texas out here. Yeah, I can see. <laughs> no, because the reason I asked because I was I know the movie Patterson with um Driver. He um he oh, did Adam in Patterson. Driver. Adam Driver did Patterson, which is in Patterson, oh. New Jersey. Oh, I didn't know that. I know Lean on Me is also based in oh, okay. Patterson. Yeah, yeah, that's where the and you could tell because the principal had a bat that he carried around the school. <laughs> that's how you can tell it was, it was made in Patterson. 
<laughs> so I got to I got to ask. Um, I am very familiar with Gino Bisconte. Mm. I've I've heard interviews. I've seen his comedy. Is he as much of a shit show as he is when he's getting interviewed and he's just drunk as hell? Like just saying daddy a lot. I mean, he sounds like fun. <laughs> He he um he does say daddy a lot. Unfortunately, it doesn't take alcohol for him to do that. So he'll just willingly call himself daddy. Um no, he's not as much of a mess. He can be. Uh but he's not it, that's not his neutral. His neutral is uh he's uh he qu- he's quiet, he keeps himself, he doesn't wear a shirt. He smokes cigars and he listens to like Sarah McLachlan lesbian music. That's like wow. his neutral. And he's got a cat. He used to live with me. He lived with me and my wife. And are, uh, go are on. You, are, are you serious about like the cat? And because that is like the complete 180 of the oh, yeah. and Sarah McLaughlin music. Totally, like- totally. I had to tell my wife when um, so it was her four bedroom apartment that we lived in. And as her people moved out, mine moved in. And uh, and I was like, oh, we should have Gino move in. And me and my wife were just roommates. We were just friends. And the three of us had a, a three week rule. If the three of us were together, we got so blacked out that we couldn't hang out the three of us again for another three weeks. So it was <laughs> pick your pick your night because we won't be together in the same room for another three weeks after that. That's how drunk we would get together. And um, so I was like, I think we should have Gino move in. And she was like, I don't think I, I can do that. And I was like, no, you don't. You don't get it. I was like, that's the fun Gino. I go, I know. I know the, the the bummer Gino. I know the Gino <laughs> that when you when you wake up, it, he's just annoying. <laughs> he would he would so he would try to do dishes, but it was like it was as if he took a bucket of water and just threw it in the kitchen. Like he'd come home and everything is just wet. It was like Hurricane <laughs> Gino. And I, I went, can you not clean up? It's worse. <laughs> it's worse in here when you clean. Just. Go into a corner and sit there. D- don't try to be productive. When you do things that normal people should do, it ends up worse than if you were to do nothing at all. So do me a favor. Get out of the fucking kitchen. Stop trying to clean <laughs> And like, dude, one day I came home. I, came, I was like uh, waiting tables at the time. <laughs> I came home and he's just sitting on the couch in gym shorts, with no shirt on sweating with like in the arms of the angels playing and he's typing on his laptop. And I just walked in and I go, what happens when I leave this apartment? I just, I have to know what, what does it take for you to not move and sweat like that while being on your laptop, listening to the most meditative music that you can listen to. Shirk Fest 2020. Yeah, man. It's gotta be. It's gotta be. Wow. It, it's, there's no other solution. <laughs> Then he's just fucking. He's just a uh, crying and himself. masturbating. Yeah, he's got it <laughs> aggressively. Gotta. Sure. sure. I, to be honest, I think that's the only way he finishes mm. is, if he, <laughs> is if he cries wow. and sweats. Well, and the Sarah McLaughlin or whatever, however you pronounce it, it explains yeah. why he adopted the cat. That's true. That's absolutely him and my wow. wife go to concerts like that. Like they went to like Cheryl Crow together or something. Mm-hmm. Like they just like go out on these like girls night dates. And then him and I. So here's what it is. I'm I'm a I'm a big drinker. I'm not out of control. I swear to God, I'm not out of control. <laughs> <laughs> my thing is I can drink uh, in in human amount of booze before I get drunk. I've just always had a tolerance like that. I think it's my heritage. I'm just like. I, I'm literally Russian, German, a 29% Jew from Ukraine, uh, who's a comedian with the last name Dombrowski. So this guy Zelensky is uh, a real hero to me as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> <laughs> but I literally in in the war, the major wars of our lifetime, I my heritage is both sides that fight each other. So I can drink a fuck ton of booze. Um, so Gino and I will go out. He'll get drunk extremely fast. And he'll have to bow out. I'll keep going. So my superpower is that it takes a, a ton of alcohol to get me drunk. His is that he'll wake up the next day and just want to do it all over again. And I'll be like, I need a week before I can get that drunk again, or I need a month off till I do that. So that's kind of like the difference between us. So him and I will go out and uh, and rage, but he'll go to he'll go to like like uh, 
art exhibits with my wife and like concert. It, it's great. It's like a, it's a good friend to have. It, oh, totally. Totally. Every married like, guy needs one of those. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You want to go to the Cheryl Con- uh, Crow concert? I'm like, nah. And she's like, I'll see if Gino's around. I'm like, that's perfect. I like that. <laughs> you still get to bang her when she comes home. It's one win, and win. Him. Wow. It's, it's a win, win, win. Yeah, actually. <laughs> yeah. You should see how wet the kitchen is after I bang him. It's, uh, <laughs> 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 um, so that, uh, Kind of ties into um, banging your... in the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. No, your podcast, because I know you've interviewed Gino on it. Um, mm. I was I mean, you've interviewed some fucking heavy hitters. Yeah, we've had a really good guest list. So. I'm curious, do you just ask them or is this sort of set up? Um. Yeah. So, well, first off, let me say that I've had a great guest list and I apologize that I'm on yours. Uh, <laughs> this, is, I, this is the same way I felt uh, I saw Dave Chappelle at the Comedy Cellar after my prom in high school and then when I became a comic I started doing prom shows and telling these kids like I'll never forget seeing Dave Chappelle it made such an impact on me and basically what I'm saying is I'm sorry that you have me <laughs> not, not Dave Chappelle it's the same thing so the podcast um the way that that basically started was uh, I've done a ton of radio, uh, Sirius XM and all these podcast networks. Uh, I'm a I'm a Howard Stern guy. I've done the Howard Stern wrap up show. Artie Lang was like uh, a real uh, impact on me early on in my uh, career. Uh, he really gave me a shot. He had me on his direct TV show and his podcast and stuff. So I'm I'm such a, a Stern fan and a radio guy that I've always loved doing, uh, you know, this this form of entertainment. And I never had an idea that I thought was original enough that would stand out. Uh, And then I started thinking of it like there were all these podcast feuds and fights and it's like everyone's talking about everyone. That's just not who I am. I thought whatever happened is just making people laugh. It's like a a while ago in stand up, everyone had this, you know, this soapbox comedy where they everyone wants to make a good point and, and get an applause break. But it's like you forgot to make people laugh in the middle of that. So right. for me, I'm, I'm always about to laugh. I'm always going for the laugh on stage. I'm before any point I make, I'm always going for uh, the laugh on a podcast. So uh, I, I decided I don't want to interview people because I don't think I'm going to be better than Stern or Rogan or whoever you listen to interview people. Uh, I don't want to um, argue. I don't want to do any feuds. It's just not who I am. I, I think it's stupid. So I thought about what about just joking? That's it. Just purely fucking jokes on a podcast. And it was supposed to be me and Kevin Farley. And uh, I was I was on the road with Farley a lot. And he was like, let's do a podcast together. And uh, and he just got too busy. But it was basically him and I were having cigars and we saw a news story and we just started riffing and doing these characters and trying to make each other laugh. And he's a Farley man. You, you like he does something stupid and you can't help. A giggle. It's like my childhood. <laughs> I I opened for him in Sacramento. Oh, uh, he's the best. He's yeah, just the greatest. We had a good fucking time. He was like, is Folsom prison like real? Like, can we go there? <laughs> and I was just like, you know, it's a real prison. There's like real people there. Oh, sure. Still. Yeah. So, yeah, like, yeah. We drove by it, but I was like, yeah, no, good luck. Yeah. Five yeah, bucks yeah, yeah. From it. <laughs> <laughs> he's uh, he's the best. So we would we would always just try to make each other laugh. And I went, that's what the podcast should be. It's just what comics doing what we do off stage. You know, we talk about news. We talk about comedy. We just everyone's just trying to go for the joke and get a laugh in the room. So uh, when he got too busy to do the show and he had his own pot, he had Kevin Farley on the road and all this stuff. And he's like, I don't think I have time to do another one. I was just like, I'm just going to do it. And I'll just have a different comic each week. Oh, that's so cool. the, the reason that I did Gino first was because we already had the chemistry and uh, Uh, So I knew it would be good and I knew people would want to listen to us together. I also knew if I had trouble with the format that he wouldn't shut the fuck up. So I could, (laughs) there would be no dead air because if I'm trying to figure out what goes where he would just keep talking. Uh, So it was, it was really those three things that people would listen. We had good chemistry and I knew that uh, I could control him if he over talked and he would talk if I needed him to. Uh, So it started like that. Artie Lang was supposed to be the second guest and the week of uh, he canceled on a Sunday. Uh, But I was so new at booking anything that I was like, I don't know how to book a guest in time for Thursday. So I texted Gino that I need him to be back on. 
I didn't think people would listen to us two weeks in a row. So what I said was uh, I wrote this, uh, this like sketch for me and my producer, uh, Adam Hineker, who also worked with Kevin Farley, does Kevin Brennan, uh, MLC. Uh, so <laughs> I wrote this thing, this open where um, he got a text from the big name guest saying he can't make it, but he's sending a replacement uh, who's a bigger name guest. And the only reason he would do it is uh, if we didn't use his name to promote our show. That's like the whole setup that is. It was like this mystery guest and it ended up just being Gino Bisconti again. <laughs> and, and he pretended to be just like living in the studio the whole week. Uh, so then <laughs> Carlos Mencia, who's my mentor, was on the third one. And he came on and he went, oh, where's Gino? And I go, no, 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 he's not on the show. And he goes, well, I'm only doing this because I thought Gino was here. Oh. So every single episode starts making fun of Gino because it's just a callback to yeah. the, the <laughs> second week that already couldn't make it. And Gino Visconti was or was still in the studio from the first week because he's uh. homeless. <laughs> so literally all of these uh, guests. And what I found out is, uh, I mean, I knew everyone knew Gino anyway. Uh, but everyone, you just bring up his name. Now I don't write anything. I just bring up his name and someone's got something to say about him. And it's always, it's always funny. It's always insulting. Um, <laughs> so I did that, but yeah, the, so the guest list, I basically went through the Rolodex of like anyone I needed views right away or, or listens right away for me to keep doing it. Cause otherwise I'm like, I'm going to be like, who the fuck is listening to this? And if I know no one's listening, I'm just not going to do it. <laughs> I'm just not going to waste yeah. my time. So I went for big name guests right away. Uh, so I basically just fucking went through my phone or like email list of anyone that I had worked with that I had a good relationship with. Uh, and I got to like, I don't know, I got to like 50 or something that, that it was like, OK, these were it was, you know, Jessica Kirsten, Rich Voss, Mark Norman, Joe List, um, you know, Ari Shafir, it, like everything just kept going and going and going. Uh, and then uh, and then my hobby turned from, you know, drunk texting in your 20s to uh, uh, drunk DMing in my 30s. And instead <laughs> of being like you up, it's like, hey, you want to do my podcast? Here's what I do. So it, it just it, it turned into this hobby of like it was a high of like, OK, now who can I get? Like, let me just go for the top of the top of the top. And it went to it got to like um, Doug Stanhope emailed me one night. I'm, I'm in my backyard. I'm fucking wasted by myself around a fire pit. And I, I just emailed his website like a month earlier. And then he emailed me back randomly on a Tuesday going, uh, how does tonight work for you? Wow. And I was fucking wasted by myself. And I went, fuck. And my producer wasn't around and I won't do the show without him. Cause I really think that he adds, he's not a comic. So he's not trying to go for the joke and he's got such a, he's got his shit together. So he's got such a unique perspective to my perspective of always going for the joke and making fun of myself and everything around me. And mm. you know, he doesn't have low self-esteem. So <laughs> he's got this elevated perspective to my dumb guy perspective. And I like to bust his balls. So the show dynamic works really well. So I won't do the show without him. So if he can ever not do the show, I'll just, I probably won't do the show anymore. Mm. Um, it's, it's honestly, it's like Howard and Robin. It's like the perfect blend mm. of type of perspectives. So I, I texted Adam and I was like, first off, I'm wasted and you should know that. Secondly, Stan Hope just texted me. You just emailed me out of nowhere. Can you do tonight? And Adam's like, dude, I don't know. I'm not even near equipment. So I, I emailed him back on. Uh, <laughs> I totally lied. I was like, hey, I'm in the city doing spots. I'm already <laughs> I, I can't do it. And uh, and so he got back to me like a day later and he was like, how about this weekend or how about this and this and this? Uh, so it, it went through this stretch. And uh, and he went on a day drinking trip by himself. He just he'll pick a bar and fly there and just day drink for three days there. And I think it's so fucking cool. And I went, I know where you are because I follow you on Twitter. Uh, don't email me back. Just go and have a good time. I don't want to kill your fucking buzz. Email me when you're back in town. And if we can make it happen, we will. And, and the whole perspective is like if someone says one, uh, yes, once they'll say yes, twice. There's no reason not to. No one's uh, that much of a dick in this industry. Um, so Stan Hope came on and that for me at that point, I thought that that was the biggest that we had we'd gotten. And um, and we did 20 minutes on a bar in Fort Worth named Lounge 9-11. That is a tribute <laughs> bar to 9-11. <Oof. 9 -11. laughs> 
which in theory uh, uh, is a great tribute, but then in reality, it's just you drinking around pictures of 9-11. <laughs> <laughs> oh, damn. It is. And we just, I mean, we just went for what every fucking fuck? joke. It's so bad, dude. It's so bad. So it was like, he Were was they like, dress the waitresses up as like 72 virgins. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes. It was all shit like that, where I would go, you know, how would you like to black out in the only place you're supposed to never forget? Uh, <laughs> like, it's like all the he, you know, Santa would be like, try the deep fried first responders, and, like, all this, like, <laughs> and we just kept going and going and going. And then he emailed me later that night, uh, like an update of what he researched on Lounge 9 11 <laughs> by himself. And it was like all of this stuff. And that was the moment that I was like, this is a really cool show. It, it spent, I spent a while really, um, just like figuring out what the show was. And I do think it's evolving again. I think it's turning more into a conversational experience with, have you heard of this? What's your take on this? This is what I've seen. So it's, it's more, um, I don't know, the, to use the word organic sounds douchey, but it's not so much me being like, oh, well, let's go from this news story to this news story. It's less of a, a morning show format, and it's more of like a full conversation, uh, including the news and all that, that type of stuff. Um, so that was the moment where I was like, oh, this is a really cool show. And I think that people enjoy it. And I do think that the the guests enjoy it. And like I said, we've had I, I mean, we've had some really big fucking comics. We have some legendary comics uh, and and they all seem to really enjoy it. You know, uh, Stan Hope tweeted about the podcast on his own, was just like, oh, this is fucking wicked fun. And then uh, it just took off from there. So it's a good time. Yeah, because. Uh- People must enjoy it because you did. Didn't you do an episode at the New York Comedy Fest? What was it last year? Yeah. In December, we were official. We were an official part of the New York Comedy Festival. So. Um, and we had so we had uh, Rich Voss do an episode and Bonnie do an episode. So I had them on together live okay. and I had never done a live podcast. And I don't know that I'll ever do another <laughs> <laughs> because I'm such a stand up. I've been doing it for 12 years. At my peak, I was doing 400 shows a year. Uh, I Uh. just, I, it's who I am. It's what I want to do. I don't want to act. I just, I want to be a comic. That's just what I, what I do. And so it's not a podcast where you have this like inner, like us right now, we have this inner circle. We're all bouncing jokes and riffing and having fun. We're all making each other laugh. Uh, then you add a live element to it with a live, a live audience that may not get the joke or may be offended by the shit that you talk about, especially on a news heavy show. Yeah. And they, and, and if they don't laugh, I'm such a stand up that I feel like I'm bombing in front of them rather than even though like, you know, uh, like, uh, like it was basically just rich and Bonnie roasting me in front of an audience. <laughs> and then, and then me going back at rich and rich laughing, rich is an easier laugh than Bonnie. Bonnie can hold her shit together and will make you fucking suffer. Rich will break character and laugh with you. Uh-huh. And so even though we're all making each other laugh and having a good time, if the audience is just watching, you feel like you're eating shit and yeah. you don't realize that there's just like a studio audience at like a talk show, basically. Yeah. So it's hard it to was, watch a conversation. It was very uncomfortable. It was yeah. incredible. And by the end, I was just like, oh, my God, the whole episode bombed. I was like, we're a part of the festival. I was like, man, I haven't eaten shit like that on stage in years. <laughs> and then uh, the owner of the Vulcan uh, from Austin was there. He was in town and, and he was at the show, which is very cool. And he was like, dude, that was one of uh, he was like, that was one of the, the better live podcasts I've seen. And I was just like, oh, my God, how painful. <laughs> Do the other ones feel like if that was good, I can't even imagine a bad one. So I was like, okay, as long as everyone else is happy, I'm cool with it. Are you going to do heroin after this? Danny, there's a lot of drugs happening in your box. It just keeps going out for some reason. Because I'm listening and I'm not smoking at all. I'm hella high. It just keeps freebasing. There's coke falling from the ceiling. (laughs) Uh, so scum bust out shrooms, throwing yeah, the mouth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, I'm not there yet. Just fucking trimming it's weed there, dishes under she the screen. <laughs> so for me, I just go, uh, as long as everyone enjoyed it, I'm cool thinking, okay, we did one really cool live show. I don't think I could do it again. I don't, I don't <laughs> think I, you know, it's just, it's not stand up and it's not a podcast. And I don't like what it is. Yeah. <laughs> if that makes sense. Yeah. Makes perfect sense. 
That's, that's a, kind of an intimidating one because I can see Rich Boss busting balls real bad. Oh, see, I live in that. Yeah. Because that, that's going to be funny and the audience sure. is going to laugh. So to that, I'm like, dude, give me everything you got. You know what I mean? I'll fucking whatever. We could roast battle on this and, and that'll be a fun time because I know there's laughter at the end of this. Mm-hmm. But when we're talking about it was like the Kyle Rittenhouse trial was on <laughs> and I brought it up and Bonnie goes, Jesus Christ, you want to talk about kid cancer after this? <laughs> <laughs> and, the, and the audience went, uh, Ooh. and I was like, what? and I felt like I had to explain the point of the podcast is just to make fun of everything and show the audience that you can look, you can get your news and laugh at it. Uh, you can hear what's happening. You can hear uh, comics takes, on how they see the evil shit in this world. So you can hear us and start to think about it that way too. And I'm not looking to change the fucking world, but I'm just trying to prove you can joke about anything. It's the way that you joke about it. And this is what comics do off stage. And this is funnier than a lot of the shit that we do on stage. So this is what I want to do on the podcast It's just comics being comics, making each other laugh. Cause that's some of the funniest shit that you'll fucking hear. 100%. But when you add, <laughs> when you add people that uh, that uh, don't they're not really comedy club people and they're and they're listening to you talk about fucking is Kyle Rittenhouse, uh, you know, shooting someone in the middle of the fucking street. They're like, I can't. That's that's the thing. When you hear it at home and you hear comics laugh over something fucked up, it makes you laugh and you think, oh, that's funny. I can yeah. laugh at that. But when you're in front of other people. Hearing that, <laughs> it adds another element where they're where they go. I don't. I'm not sure that I can laugh at this. Do you know what I mean? So it's yeah. it's like it's not stand up. It's not a comic being like you can laugh and here's why. We're talking to each other and you're watching someone say, "Why don't you just bring up kid cancer?" And you go, "Should I laugh at this? I don't <laughs> know if this is funny." It's just you know, it's such a weird element of it. Yeah, I bet Bonnie was great. I mean, Rich can oh, roast them, but cool. I think Bonnie is way better at roasting. Oh, Women God, are she's meaner. brutal. She's brutal. <laughs> and she'll make you question whether she had a good time or not at the end. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. And and uh, and the owner of New York Comedy Club, who's the um, uh, he runs uh, the podcast network that we're on. So it was a uh, paper house network is the New York Comedy Club's podcast network. And it was like paper house presents just joking a live podcast with Kevin Abraska. So it was like, a, it was like a human centipede of a show. And at the end I was like, I was just fucking sweating. And I'm like, I don't know what the fuck we just did. And he went, he goes, Oh no, Rich and Bonnie just came up to me and said that was an amazing time. I was like, I don't know. I don't know what people like anymore. If that was fun, <laughs> but they told me that. But at the end, you're like, uh, you know, you, you, you just don't know what's happening. You're like, I know you're busting my balls, but they're not laughing. And I don't know if it's funny. I don't know if you're not enjoying this because they're not laughing. It's like, what a fucking <laughs> bullshit situation to be. In. <laughs> so um, uh, I got one last question and then we'll get to our ultra popular thing. Um so you are a uh, brand new father. Well, not brand new, two years, right? A uh, year and a half, almost. Year and a half. So Thanks, um, as these people will attest, I know dick about babies. Um, <laughs> dick, huh? Yeah. Have you, like, like, I didn't know that. Kevin, have you done this yet? Have you taken your baby into the shitter with you because your wife wasn't home and no one else was watching? Oh, interesting question. That's an uh, <laughs> interesting uh, question, Jerry. Let's what the fuck? Uh, no. So luckily, my wife works from home. OK. And uh, this is so this is the office that we have. So the this view is set up for my podcast and this view is uh, her office. Nice. So we, we've got this L shaped desk. So she works nice. from this office, uh, which helps a lot. Um, but I, first off, I planned my day around my shit. So I, I'm not that much of a rookie and that's even before I had a kid. I need an allotted time that I can be alone and don't fucking bother me. That's my time to, to go. Uh, so I haven't had to take her with me. There has been one or two emergencies where I've cracked the door open and I can see, I could see her and I know that she can't see me and that makes me feel better. I'm, I'm talking about this on stage a lot where there's a fucked up thing being a parent right now. 
It's the most fucked up time to be a kid because we're the most aware of how fucked up we are than we've ever been. And now try to parent in that way. I'm the most aware of how fucked up I am as my parents' kids. And now I'm trying to parent and not do that to them. But it's me overcorrecting everything I do now. You know what I mean? Like, oh, yeah. like, uh, yeah. like I won't get changed around my daughter because I don't want to give her fucking issues. <laughs> <laughs> and it's not even like I think I, like this is memorable. It's like she's a year and a half. and I know she's not going to remember this, but I don't want to plant that seed and watch that fucking grow. <laughs> and it feels like there's just like a, like a, an accountant in my head racking up therapy bills with every fucked up thing I do. So I'm very aware <laughs> of what I do around her and what I don't do around her. I did get out of the shower one time and she was in her bouncer and the door popped open. And uh, and I have very dry skin, so I'm like lotioning myself completely <laughs> naked. And, she, and I look over and she's just staring at me. And it was like I was watching her get issues in real time. Do you know, <laughs> you know what that feels like, like to, to watch someone get daddy issues or watch someone mentally create an OnlyFans? It's fucking terrifying. Uh, there's a I think it was a John Panette line. There's a fine line between rubbing lotion on yourself and just rubbing yourself with lotion. Oh, sure. Wow. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me tell you something. The line got Don't cross finer. that line. Yeah. Yeah, the line got finer with me. It was more of a, it was more of a spectrum than a fine line to be honest. Uh, no. So she has not been in the bathroom with me. I'm very cognizant of what I do around her. I don't want to fuck her up this. <laughs> um, well, you've had the fortune of, you know, having locked down for a lot of that time. Sure. Cause taking kid, you know, kids that age out, uh, when you're shopping or whatever, mm -hmm. sometimes you just got to take a shit and they're in the stall with you. Oh, that's... sure. Sure. I have, I did have to piss in a home Depot. And, uh, and so I, I went into the bathroom and she was in the stroller and I just turned the stroller to face the wall. <laughs> so, I can, so I can be, it really, I mean, which is probably more abusive than just, than, <laughs> than just leaving her alone, just facing her in the wall of a men's room. <laughs> when you don't have the stroller, like my kid still yeah. is fucking nine. It's like, oh, I saw his penis. It's like, shh, shut the fuck up. Hilarious. <laughs> my, uh, my buddy has this, uh, he's got four kids and the youngest one's like a fucking caveman. And mm. he he's crazy. He's, he's partially raised by his parents, partially raised by the other kids. It's like survival mode. <laughs> it's like fucking Tarzan. And, uh, and I, we, we get to, he's my best friend. Uh, we get together uh, almost every single weekend. Uh, you know, the, it's like all the kids know each other. And we, we went on a family vacation and uh, and we're all around the table. And this is what you have to do as parents is you got to uh, uh, Rob, you'll know this. You got to sit around and be like, what was your favorite part of the weekend? And people are like, I like when I got candy and I like when I was doing this and blah, blah, blah. And we got to the little kid and they went, what's your favorite? Uh, and I went, what about you, buddy? What was your favorite part? And he he said, um, pooping on your pee pee. And he said that in public. And I went, for the record, that didn't happen. <laughs> and that never happened. You can't call me uncle anymore. Yeah. Uh, I will never be in a room alone with you mm -hmm. because no. these little kids are terrorists. They fucking say what they want and it just gets crazier and crazier. So, uh, you know, for that reason, I'm very, I'm very careful, <laughs> very careful about what I do. And it was so funny. My best friend heard that and he goes, oh, OK, we're done with this. <laughs> yeah, no bad time with you. No bad time with you. No nope. shit. <laughs> oh, fuck that, man. Have you had a blowout yet? Oh, my God. Me or the baby? <laughs> both. Based both. on his drinking stories, I'm guessing both. Yeah. <laughs> no shit. Yeah. Shit. Actually, shit. Um, yeah. The worst was, uh, and I talk about this on stage also, the worst was my daughter shit up her stomach and nothing was on her back, which is physically impossible, by the way. <laughs> Of, I will die before I find out how that happened. <laughs> and that's a lot of the, that's like what jumps you into being a parent. You know what I mean? Yeah. Is, is that, that happens and you go, this is what it's like. There's just something that's going to happen and I'm just yeah. not going to be able to yeah. find out why. 
and I gotta just be okay with that. I, I convinced myself someone broke in and, and shit on her. That's, just, <laughs> that's the only way I can sleep at night is if something logical, it, it could be the grossest thing in the world, but to me, it's logical. And I go, oh, okay, well, I'll just lock the windows next time. <laughs> my kids wow. shit on my shit, my pants. So I was holding them and I guess the diaper scooted over. Oh, so not a his diaper was perfectly clean. Didn't even have to change his diaper. Just Hilarious. had to clean him up. But it went all over my fucking pants. I was like on my way to work at the time. So oh yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. I've been I I've been pissed on. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, that was just when I was in Russia. I've been pissed on. <laughs> <laughs> I've been pissed on. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Very big hands. Uh, I've been pissed on. I changed her and then she shit on me in the same thing. That and that's, right. how, yeah, that's how we knew to move her up in diaper size, which I also didn't know was a thing. I thought it was a one size fits all. <laughs> <laughs> so that was a that was a big day for all of us in the house. <laughs> Things happened. <laughs> no kidding. <laughs> All right. Um, so that is it for the questions. It's time to get to our ultra popular thing called Inside the Comic Studio. Brilliant. Yes. Uh, before we do that, though, Kevin, plug your social media, plug uh, your yeah. album. Hi, I'm Molly. Uh, plug whatever you want. Yes. Uh, you can follow me at Kevin Dombrowski. It's Kevin Dombrowski comedy on Instagram. But if you just start typing in Kevin Dombrowski, it'll pop up. Um, there was a Kevin Dombrowski that I reached out to about getting just getting the plain name and in the middle of sending him a message about how I'm a professional comedian my phone bill got cut off <laughs> wow. I didn't pay it and so I signed yeah. back on and I just messaged him I go you know what just keep the keep the name I'm <laughs> gonna start a new career uh so I'm at Kevin Nebraska on all my social media the podcast is called just joking and it's available wherever you can download podcasts and my album is called high on molly uh, which is also available wherever you can download or stream music, Sirius XM, the whole nine. Uh, I will be recording. Um, I have to talk to the label, but I'm 90% I'm sure I'm going to be recording a new album at the end of this year. It's going to be the sequel. So High on Molly is about my wife, Molly, and getting married. And uh, the sequel is going to be about me becoming a father. Uh, I don't know the, the title of it yet, but uh, the new hour is coming along. So that'll be uh, hopefully recorded by the end of the year. So the, that's really all. Uh, that's all I've got to say about that. And if you uh, if you have trouble finding my podcast, a fan made a website uh, for it specifically to link to iTunes. Uh, it's Kevin is gay dot com. <laughs> <laughs> that, that links directly to the just joking Apple podcast uh, website. <laughs> Damn. Perfect. <laughs> that is great. It's hilarious. I love it. Someone went, I'm having trouble trying to find it. So I made this website to make it easier for everyone. I went, oh, great. What is it? And it goes, Kevin is gay .com. And I went, well, now I have to keep that. <laughs> <laughs> and there'll be a link in the show notes uh, to his album on Amazon as well. Um, Beautiful. So just click that. Uh, Danny, what do you got? Um, so you can check me out on my Instagram. I have some upcoming shows. April 3rd, I'm at Punchline. Um, and March 26th, I will be headlining in West Sacramento. So check out my Instagram page at Radchick Forever. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that it? Yep. All right, uh, Robert. I get my side project, Stand Up Dad's podcast. I do that, with my buddy. I do that with my buddy Mike. We talk about parenting, throwing some dick jokes. Uh, we're on hiatus right now till we both get our shit together. But uh, there's over 140 episodes you can check out. Check it out. And uh, based on this conversation today, pull out. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Sharon. You can catch me at I Am Big Poetry Podcast, uh, where I talk about poetry and all the other crazy stuff that comes with it. Uh, you can catch my next show, uh, What's So Funny About Comedy? What's So Funny About Poetry? Um, April 19th. And you can catch our next DJ show, um, The Wind Down Comedy Show, happening on. April 7th. Boom. What is funny about poetry? You could also uh, catch uh, Sharon in the emergency room fixing his uh, <laughs> broken nose. Uh, <laughs> I got to go somewhere like that. <laughs> Not that broken. You still see it, right? <laughs> it's like my lies I read, right? It's like. Oh. Uh, by the way, what's so funny about comedy is going to be Hannah Gatsby's new special title. Um, it's even better. It's no, really I don't know. She's just not uh, funny. <laughs> 
It doesn't have to be, according to. But her. I think the funniest thing she did was quit comedy in her special and say, "I'm not doing this." And then that was so successful, she made another comedy special. <laughs> 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 that's. I think that's a that's the best joke. <laughs> All right, uh, follow me on Twitter at the Big Nick J. Um, I will be guesting on uh, what I had heard was talking about death in the occult. Uh, March 30th, look for that. And then I'll be on gutting the sacred cow in April. So look for that. More details to come. Okay. Oh, nice. Oh, yeah. By the way, I'm on uh, I'm on the latest episode of uh, the Chip Chipperson podcast uh, with uh, Jim Norton. You could check that out. I totally forgot to plug that. And uh, my live dates are online. So if you want to see that also. God, that must have been great to be with Chip Chipperson. <laughs> that was fucking wild because uh, it's supposed to be bad jokes. Mm-hmm. And uh, <laughs> so it's like and Zach Amico was on it with me. And this guy's like a fucking machine gun of puns. And yeah. so you're just trying to think of what the worst joke is in the moment. And it just goes around. And by the end of the hour, you're like, what the fuck did I just do? <laughs> <laughs> it was fun, though. Norton's a Norton's a good guy. Uh, I do uh, want to get him on the podcast. He was uh, he was very fun. That'd be nice. All right. So have you listened to our podcast before? I uh, n- yes. No, no. no. Unfortunately, <laughs> I haven't. I'm sorry. Oh, no, that's you're, that's you're, awesome. you're yeah, you're right on par with the only ask that. So you'll feel like shit. She's like, <laughs> Fuck it. Mission accomplished. Danny, can you pass the joint so I don't have to feel bad about myself? <laughs> there you, go, you mean that, that lace joint she has <laughs> yeah. to cow on it? Yeah, I'm expecting Denzel Washington in a Monte Carlo to get uh, you wet pull up next to you. No. <laughs> I didn't know you get wet. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, so we do this thing uh, called Inside the Comic Studio. We ask all comedians the same five questions. Mm. First question is first joke that landed well. Oh, God, yes. Uh, there was a um, I was at a coin star machine in New York when I first moved into the city. And uh, and a guy came up to me and asked uh, if I can spare any change while I was dumping a bag of change into this machine. <laughs> yes, yeah. And I uh, I told him I, I got the money inside uh, and he was like, I'll wait for you on the outside. And I went, fuck. <laughs> uh, so I ran out of the store uh, and then I turned around to make sure that he wasn't following me. And I mounted a homeless woman in the middle of the street. And so oh. I, I, I if she fucking whatever. <laughs> so I, I took the subway home and I laughed about it. And I was like, that's just not that funny. So what I said was in the joke, when I ran into the woman, um, it, uh, she knocked me down uh, and I dropped all the money uh, that I got inside. Uh, and the guy that I was watching out for ran over, grabbed all the money and ran away, leaving me and the homeless woman still bent over, staring at each other face to face with her expecting an answer. And the only thing I could think to say was, can you spare any change? Uh, that was the first joke that that really hit for me. And I was like, oh, OK, I don't think I'll be able to do this again, but that's fun. <laughs> All right. Next is a uh, favorite thing about your local comedy scene. Oh, man. Favorite thing about. I do. Look, I like the other comics. I think it's fun. I think it's a good network in New York. If you're a working comic, you know, the other working comics. So it's fun working with your friends a lot. But it's the turnover of people that you see, the amount of times that you can perform in a night, the amount of people from all over the country. So you get a vibe of what different people like and uh, you can really work out, um, you know, if you have like four or five spots in a night, you can go in with the premise and come out with like a, a an almost fleshed out punchline. Uh, so that's really cool. I do. I do enjoy that. And then, you know, look, it's just New York city. So it's like, it's, it's one of the fun things to do that people like to, um, flock to and, uh, and getting to work those shows is, is fun. All right. Now the exact opposite. One thing you dislike would like to see changed. Oh man. Like to see changed. I don't know that. I <laughs> I don't know that I would change anything. I don't know. Uh, work more clubs. Me, me getting booked at other clubs. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to see that change. Uh, my, no, my two, my two home clubs are New York comedy club and Gotham. I'm, I'm very lucky, especially post pandemic to work the amount that I do and the rooms that I do work. So I think I'd like to see more clubs pop up uh, in the city. 
I think that would be fun. I think there's a, it's a little bit of a lull right now in New York where there's only f- like four main clubs that are at full capacity working how they should be working uh, in the city. So I, I'd like to see the city come back to what it was before this. You know, I never thought I'd say I miss danger fields, but I fucking do. The weekend spots at danger fields were great. The worst I ever did was performed to two people on a Monday while they were making out. And I had to do my act to get paid. Yes. Uh, and then one of them got up and the other one just got on their phone and started talking. And that was what I don't miss about that. <laughs> but I would still honestly, I'd take it back. I got so much work done at those uh, at those rooms. Yeah, that sounds amazing. It's fun. It's a good time yeah. here. Yeah, yeah, that I person was, was Danny D making out with somebody. No, <laughs> I was in New York in October and it was fucking phenomenal. It was so much fun. It, you can get a ton of work done here if you do it right. And yeah. you you really focus. And I'm not saying you got to be like so work crazy about it. But if you have a little bit of motivation and you're constantly writing and trying to tweak your act, uh, there's no place better than the New York City to do it. I agree. Nice. All right. Next question is favorite local comedian. Mm. Jessica Kirsten. Oh, uh, she is. No one makes me laugh more in person than Jessica Kirsten. It's unbelievable. I could never, ever do what she does on stage ever, 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 ever. She's so in her own league and so beyond fucking silly and, uh, and just lives to entertain people. So, uh, I think I think I'd have to say her. I also really like Ari Shafir. I have a huge spot for Ari. Um, he's a hilarious comic, but what he does off stage might be funnier. He just he's like an Andy Kaufman type person. He uh he was on my podcast and he told me that Sean Donnelly, a New York comic, uh had a heart attack. And and then I saw and he spent like five minutes telling me about this. I was this is crazy. And that weekend I saw Sean at New York comedy club. And I went, dude, how are you feeling? And he's like, what do you mean? And I was like, Ari, Ari told me that you had a heart attack. And he was like, I didn't have a fucking heart attack. So I sent a selfie of me and Sean to Ari. And he laughed and said, I've been waiting for this. <laughs> Ari did that knowing that he would be the only one to get the payoff. And that was okay for him. He'll do those jokes just for himself. And then he talked about it on his podcast. DeRosa was like, you're a fucking liar. And he goes, yeah, but if you, he goes, if, if you tell me I'm a liar, I'll admit it. And he goes, I was on Dombrowski's podcast. I said, Sean Donnelly had a heart attack and I made the whole thing up. Uh, and then what's worse is uh, I told Sean the story and we were, we were, <laughs> we were performing together and he got on stage and he started telling the audience a story. And then in the middle of it, he goes, wait, wait a minute. He goes, you thought I had a heart attack and you didn't reach out to me. <laughs> and I was like, oh, no. <laughs> Oh, I was like, oh, fucking Ari, man. <laughs> That's the type of shit that he'll do. Oh, yeah, I, I have such respect. Like when he um he tweeted out the Kobe joke and then uh-huh. once he was getting flack, he was like, I'm sorry it got hacked. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I was with the owner of New York Comedy Club having cigars that night and uh, there were bomb threats called into the club because Ari was booked in the lineup. Wow. Crazy fucking shit happened. Wow. Uh, and, and honestly, if you're listening to this and your response to an offensive joke or bit that someone does with their audience is to threaten innocent people's lives. I don't think Ari's the wrong one in this situation. <laughs> yeah. Like, I think we need to possibly look at ourselves and the decisions that we're making. If you think Ari's the wrong in the wrong in this situation, there's we need to rethink some things. <laughs> All right. And oh, then, he uh, also, I'm sorry. The other night, I got to tell you, the other night I was wearing a jacket. It was fucking freezing in the club and I was wearing a jacket. He goes, is that a Pendleton jacket? And I went, yeah, I go, we were, I was at an outlet with my wife and she made me get this jacket. Not like it she was just like, it looks really nice and it's a good investment. I don't know anything about clothes. So I was just like, I, I know what I like to wear. And I went, all right, I'll do it. And he was like, oh, that, that jacket will last forever. He's like, it's a nice jacket. I was like, thanks, man. And then I got on stage and I was about to introduce him and I got a text and I thought it was from my wife. I bring up Ari on stage and I get off stage and I check my phone and Ari had texted me. Your hat is stupid. <laughs> <laughs> While I was on stage in the middle of introducing him. <laughs> that level of fuck with somebody 
is I'm a huge Andy Kaufman fan. I'm like, I could totally get behind that. I think it's yeah. hilarious. <laughs> All right. And then uh, last question is advice to new comedians. Yes. Oh God. I love this. Um, know why you're funny. Know why you're not funny. It's the most powerful tool you have. Stand up is built on connection with an audience. It's not good enough to get a laugh. Anyone can get into a batting cage, uh, put it up to 100 miles an hour, and eventually make contact if you keep swinging. If you keep telling jokes, you'll eventually make someone laugh. But if you don't know why they laughed, you're getting lucky. You need to know why what you just said is funny, and you need to know why it's not funny. Uh, If you bomb, you'll go, what went wrong? And never make that same mistake again. But if you kill, no one says, why did I kill? You just go, thank God I killed. Ask yourself, why did I kill? And then you'll be able to break down what you did correct. uh, And then duplicate that into further jokes and further acts and uh, more elaborate uh, joke structure. And and you'll grow a lot more because of that. That's fantastic. That's Ah, deep. Yeah, that that. Uh, batter's thing analogy that was that was deep sir <laughs> that's Damn. i i i'm a product of the mencia tour uh it's like boot camp for comedy uh, i went in as a crowd work guy and when i came out uh i had a number one album on itunes and no one knows my name you know what i mean and that's mm-hmm. what that's what mencia uh that's what those old school guys do to you i'd get off stage and he'd be like, why did that joke work? Why didn't that joke work? And if you can't answer that, you don't really know what you did on stage. So mm. it got like beat into my, I got like jumped nightly <laughs> uh, about like mistakes I made on stage and not like, don't ever make that. Tell me why you made that and why you're not going to do that next time or what went wrong or what went right specifically. And it really unlocked this whole side of me where, uh, you know, everything I do is on purpose on stage And, you know, when you can go from making people laugh on purpose to knowing why they're laughing, that's like the next step. And it really it really pushes you forward. So I'm a huge proponent uh, in stuff like that. But. Damn, speechless. (laughs) We're speechless, sir. That's that's really good advice. (laughs) I know you just blew Danny's stoned ass mind. <laughs> She's stoned. I didn't, yeah, she won't remember I didn't mean it. to sober you up from your bath salts over there. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> uh, no, I'm just, I'm impressed that you're friends with Nick. Honestly, that's actually what I was thinking. Like, <laughs> what the fuck is that? Like, I asked Nick, I was just like, Nick, how did you hear about this guy? Like, and he's like, we're hot on Twitter together. And I was like, oh, OK. I right. didn't say we're hot on you're, Twitter. You're, I would say we're hot on Twitter. <laughs> you're, you're, uh, yeah, yeah Nick's, Nick's a good dude, man. I uh, always you're have a good fun. grab. Yeah, this is a good time, man. Thanks for having me on. So I'm so sorry that I, I signed on 6 p.m. Eastern time uh, <laughs> while you guys were probably still uh, doing, you know, uh, uh, Rob, you were probably chasing a kid into the bathroom, and I didn't mean to interrupt that. Uh, Danny Shron, was scoring you, pot. Danny was scoring. If sure, I could have, Sharon, you could have avoided a whole broken nose if you had signed up. Hey, it was a moment. <laughs> got caught. It's like, damn. All right, let's well, get on. Well, thank you for coming on. I know you got to head out. You got some spots. Yeah, no worries. So uh, definitely check Kevin out. Check out uh, his Facebook. Uh, as I said, link in the show notes for his album. Everybody else, stay safe. Beautiful. Thank you, Thank you guys. Take Take care, no later. Bye. See you soon.